Welcome to the Cashless Society. We are here. We are at the Blue Wahoo Stadium and they wouldn't let me pay with cash to come in. And anywhere and everywhere we go, it says cashless, a cashless stadium. So your dollars are worthless now. And I guess the federal government is completely defunct because it says on the dollar that this is good for all debt, public and private. And yet places like this now don't accept cash at all. And the lady told us it's a mandate. I said, well, it's only a mandate when both parties agree. I don't agree. I want you to take my cash. She said, we won't do it. So folks, you need to stand up for your right to use cash because this is the way the Mark of the Beast comes in. And this is their plan. Shalom. I would like to give our honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to our sister Akim, pushing this word across the four corners of the world. Just another news update through the spirit, the power, and the vibration of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And this is an article from NewsTarget.com, and the title says American businesses. Bitbox stores increasingly rejecting cash as forced shift to cashless society accelerates. And this article was published on January the 31st, 2024. And it says, despite the fact that around 6 million people living in the U.S. do not have bank accounts and are considered to be unbanked, a growing number of retail stores, including large, well-known Bitbox stores, are refusing cash and forcing customers to pay with cards or smartphones. Upwards of 1 billion people worldwide currently do not have a bank account, which means that they too are in trouble when stores in their native lands decide to scrap cash and switch to a cashless model of digital and easily trackable payment systems. In larger cities like Seattle and Los Angeles, no cash accepted. Signs are popping up everywhere, including on the windows of stores that claim to be inclusive. Nothing says inclusive quite like refusing customers who do not have a bank account, eh? The vast majority of bankless people hold that status not because of any kind of political or financial protest, but rather because they do not have enough money in their possession to meet the minimum balance requirements. Every two years, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, runs a household survey asking people why they are bankless. In 2021, more than 40% of respondents said they are too poor to have a bank account which means these same folks also cannot shop at no cash accepted stores. The second and third most common answers for why some people do not have a bank account include because avoiding a bank gives more privacy and because they simply don't trust banks. Then there are the costs of dealing with a bank, which oftentimes are exorbitant. And it says right here, Federal Reserve to force U.S. banks to borrow from it. Speaking of banks, FX Hedge confirmed that the private Federal Reserve is changing its role from lender of last resort to dictatorial financial overlord. Word on the street is that Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is planning to force United States banks to borrow from it or else. In the spirit of never letting a crisis go to waste, the Fed, the FDIC, and the Treasury are citing the collapse of several regional banks in March of last year as the impetus for transforming the discount window from an emergency measure into standard operating procedure, FX Hedge explains. Traditionally, the Fed has charged a premium or high interest rate than the market rate for loans to discourage entities from going to its first for a loan. Again, the Fed is supposed to be a lender of last resort until now. The discount window, as it is called, for the Fed's lending program is publicly available information, allowing the public to see which banks are in trouble and which are more secure. The Fed wants to keep that discount window hidden while forcing banks to borrow from it out of public view. Other banks and investors alike have a right to know who is taking these loans from the Fed, FX Hedge notes. To hide that information would be the equivalent of countless types of fraud, like a firm hiding from investors that it has bad assets or outstanding loans that are kept off the books. But this is essentially what the Fed wants to do, hide a valuable market signal from all participants in the financial community. So the Fed and its cronies and government intend to muddy the waters, making everything so murky that it'll be impossible to tell who is doing what. How much longer would the US dollar be king? And through the Holy Spirit, if you are measuring the times diligently in itself, you will definitely see that we are in those prophetic times of a currency reset. 
where this American monopoly money will be null and void very soon. And it will be transitioned into a digital currency paradigm very soon. So therefore, we are in those times where the vision referring to the council of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh is standing. And that takes me right to Habakkuk, the second chapter in the first verse. I will stand upon my watch and sit me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I should answer when I am reproved. So a part of our watch or guard post as a prophet of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai, it's our spiritual call of duty to observe carefully and be circumspect within these last days, which is why it's stated within the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, redeeming the time because the days are evil, which means bad times. And where you have the man of sin, referring to Esau Edom, is doing everything within his might and power that was given unto him by Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai to cause all. When you read the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse, which ultimately goes into his NWO or his great reset. So I will stand upon my watch and sit me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I should answer when I am reproved. And let's link that up with Proverbs, the 8th chapter, the 34th verse. Blesses the man that hear me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. So we supposed to be those devoted watchmen that sounding the alarm to our people and really to the whole world through that spiritual vehicle, the Internet. All right. So back in Habakkuk, the second chapter, the second verse. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. And that spiritual vision ultimately represents these end time prophecies. From that spiritual awakening of our people who we really are within these latter times to Jacob's trouble, the implementation of the MOTB, the Karama, when you read the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse, World War Three, Yahweh Shah's second coming, along with the angels, the elect of the nation of Israel that's not going to bow down to the image of the beast and will have victory over Esau's image, his mark and the number of his name. So again, and the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run and read it. And that vision through the Holy Spirit, which is that spiritual I have, is being made more clearly as these times goes by. And it's going to be so evident, even our people that do not have that spiritual I have, they are really going to see the horns on this devil Esau eat them very soon. As it stated within Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse, that he's going to come down with great wrath and by knowing that he had but a short time, which means a short time with his rulership and also by fulfilling this enterprise, which is this NWO agenda. But for the vast majority of our people, it's going to be too late for them to be within that spirit of repentance within the cool of the day, which is right now. And that's why it's stated within Jeremiah 8 and 7, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So that vision is the greatest spiritual gem that we can ever have within these end times. And that spiritual endowment were given unto the servants, the prophets, which the brother right here, Habakkuk, happened to be. And before they was classified or deemed as prophets, they were known as seers, which goes into like a visionary. And that means to be inspired by having that spiritual insight of knowledge, wisdom and understanding of foreseeing the future. And that's by being linked in with Yahweh Shah's testimony, as it's stated within the book of Revelation, how the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy, which means to declare or say something beforehand. And that takes me to Proverbs 22 and 3. A prudent man foresee it the evil and hide it himself. And the way that we as the hopeful elect hide ourselves, as it's stated within the book of Psalm, the 91st chapter, how he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, should abide under the shadow of the Almighty, build this spiritual understanding. So a prudent man foreseeth the evil, and how the Lord is going to do that? By working through his vessel of dishonor and being a madman sparing none, aka Dr. Evil, which are the hierarchy of Esau Edom trying to fulfill their enterprise. And when they bring it, it's going to be some very dark times. So a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hiding himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And the simple ones of our people, which are the vast majority, 
They love simplicity. So a lot of our people within these end times are going to die within their ignorance. And that's going to be by the manifold of Esau's devices. And as you can see right here from the title, American businesses, big box stores, increasingly rejecting cash as forced shift to cashless society accelerates. And in order for these devils to fulfill their agenda, they have to pull away at the flesh, which means by targeting at the people's comforts. And once this cashless economy be instituted, all of these world's major central banks are going to be devising plans to implement central bank digital currencies that they will control. And once this becomes a reality, this government will no longer have to seek aid from these different banks in order to freeze your bank accounts. And when these sheeple lose access to their financial accounts, they will not be able to have a livelihood, which means by buying food, paying for rent, or buying supplies, and the list goes on. So these people will go into panic mode. And as this article is stated, never letting a good crisis go to waste. And by this order of KO, that's when the hierarchy of Esau Edom are going to implement their Inuit Coeptus, which is sealed upon the back of every American dollar. And that translates into he, referring to their guy Satan, is favorable to our undertakings or success. And that takes me right to Job 5 and 12. He, referring to Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, and really it's going to be Yahweh Shai. Because he was the one that gave Esau his blessing as Isaac from the beginning in Genesis. And to balance it out, it will be only right by Yahweh Shah taking away that blessing from Esau, which is all recorded within the book of Revelation. Disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And the crafty is going to the host of the high ones, the main workers of iniquity, starting from the tabernacle of Esau Edom. And they are crafty or devious because when you read the book of Genesis, the third chapter, it goes into about that serpent and how he was more subtle than any beast within the field. And that subtle or subtle goes into how he is very crafty or artful in deception. Because once they implement this agenda right here, at the beginning, they're not going to force it like on the people pretty much just like how they did with the jab. Then gradually they start bringing forth their draconian measures. And that's why Joe Biden stated within one of his speeches a couple years ago or so how he is running out of patience. So by Esau being very cunning and crafty, he's going to promote it as conveniency or security. And where in actuality, this device going into the MOTB, the Karama, is going to harm the human body because you're putting something foreign within your body that your immune system cannot fight off. So again, back in Job 5 and 12, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And once you go to Edamon Line for enterprise, it says an undertaking. Remember, and you at Coeptus, that Latin phrase, it goes into he is favorable to our undertakings or success. So right here for enterprise, it says an undertaking. And when you go on down, you see it says undertake take in hand and what device all this cashless society this cbdc talk are these different american businesses rejecting cash like what device fits what we just read within the edamon online within today's time that matches up with biblical prophecies it has to be revelation of 13 chapter and 16 verse and he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bun to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that mark goes into karatma, which means an imprinted stamp or mark, that digital all. Because these left-hand elites, they look at these people as goyim or cattle, which is what the slave master used to bring their slaves or their cattle with, the slave owner's mark. So transition into this time, because knowledge has been increased, according to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, it's going to be like a digital all, which is all forging into this NWO. And when I brought out earlier about that NUET Coeptus, that seal that's on the back of every American dollar, the person who designed that seal was a guy by the name of Charles Thompson. And he stated the words NUET Coeptus means to signify the beginnings of the new American era. 
aka the Great Reset or the NWO. So this is another step closer to the MOTB. And that concludes the lesson right here through the spirit. American businesses, bit box stores increasingly rejecting cash as forced shift to cashless society accelerates. And hopefully with that, you all stay edified, you all stay strong, keep pushing forward. Shalom.